Hi guys, welcome back to the last lesson in this series about ninth chords. And what I want to talk about is just more like reality versus theory, I think would be a good title. Because in theory, and again, when you're talking theory, we're looking at a blackboard, aren't we? We're not listening to music, we're not, we're not hearing someone play the guitar, we're literally looking at you know, literally notes and numbers on a blackboard, okay? So you've always got to take everything here with a little bit of a pinch of salt, okay? You can't hear any of this at this point. So what I'm trying to get at is that these chords are now five note chords, okay? And in, and in really, in theory terms, that's how they should be constructed. But we have to start getting realistic here. We're not playing a piano. If we were playing a piano, we'd have the potential to play 10 or more notes, depending on how many you could squash together, with both hands, okay? On a guitar, you can play six maximum, because you've got six different strings, so you can play six different notes, okay, at the same time, right? So, when you're looking at a chord which has got five notes in it, it, it starts to get really quite tricky to put together a, a selection of good, um, variety of chord shapes on the guitar with five um, different notes in them, okay? So this is where we start to get a bit selective about the notes that we use. And this is what I mean about theory versus reality, okay? Now, the first thing when you're dealing with a ninth chord is that we need to establish the important notes here, okay? So, Obviously, a really important note is going to be the nine. That's going to be super important because it's a ninth chord. You can't have a ninth chord without a nine, okay? Equally, you can't have a kind of major dominant chord or minor ninth chord without some kind of third, okay? Because the third that's natural defines it as some kind of major-esque thing or potentially dominant, but we'll get to that. And the flat third defines it as a minor thing. So that is absolutely crucial. Without the flat third or the major third, we kind of lose the structure of the chord, okay? So we have to have that in there. Then we have to also include the seven, whether it's flattened or natural seven, we have to include that as well as the nine, okay? Because it, it keeps it, um, for example, a dominant chord, you know, because the three makes it a major chord and the flat seven alongside that three makes it dominant, okay? Same here with the major. We need that major seventh sound before we get the nine, okay? Otherwise it would sound like a totally different chord and you're probably looking at an add chord, which we'll get to later on. So crucially, we must have the melody note, the nine, the seven, which defines it as major seventh dominant and uh, minor seven, and then three, which defines major or minor, okay? Now, at that point, we're left with the root and the fifth, okay? So, the first thing I want to mention about the root is that you need the root in it, okay? It's the root note. However, if you're playing with a bass player or um, a, a keyboard player or whatever, and they're very likely going to play the root, that's your only scenario where you can lose that, you know? If you're looking for a few spare fingers to get in an extra ninth or an extra seventh or an extra third, if you're playing music with someone who's gonna play the root note on the bass, for example, you can get rid of that. You don't have to keep it in your chord. But if you're just playing by yourself, so solo guitar, of course, the root is, is what kind of roots everything, okay? So everything's related to the root. It's the third from the root, the seventh from the root, the ninth from the root, and so on, okay? So that leaves us with our five, okay? And the five is an absolute blank space, okay? So literally, I'm just gonna go here. The five is the first thing that you can start getting rid of, okay? If you're gonna go and start learning these chords across the neck and you find that trying to find every single one of these notes every single time is just too hard, then get rid of the five, okay? It's gonna make a massive difference to the fact that you can now get all the interesting notes that make a difference in the chord and the five is just a padding. It's the way I like to think about it, okay? It really just kind of pads out the root note, um, but doesn't actually bring any substance or defining feature to the chord, like the third, the seventh, and the melody note of the ninth do, okay? So that's one thing to bear in mind, guys, especially when you're looking through shapes that are already pre-written on the guitar, and it says C minor nine, and you're looking at it going, I cannot see the G in that at all, they've got it wrong. 
Well, they haven't got it wrong. They've just decided and made a decision to omit, you know, that G note because it's not really doing anything, okay? And that's an important thing to remember because chord extensions, um, like ninths, elevenths, thirteenths, so just adding more and more notes to your chord could in theory mean that you end up with a seven note chord, okay? Which on a piano, spaced out well, could probably sound quite spectacular, but on a guitar, it's just not gonna happen. So you need to start learning which notes you can get rid of, which notes are crucial to the chord, and which notes are not, okay? So, we won't go any higher than a ninth for now, this is the main thing to get right, and hopefully now, you understand the major ninth, dominant ninth, and minor ninth, and can start learning those chords properly.